So question number one uh, we got from a student is, can a single point without clocking be used as a secondary datum in a feature control frame? Now, this question kind of lends its hand to a handful of uh, different concepts that we're gonna be going over here. Um, the first of which is datums versus datum features. Now, if you all remember datums defined by the standard are exact points, axes, lines, and planes. This is a typo, planes or a combination thereof, right? So we have theoretically exact points, lines, axes, and planes. Well, we know that if we have a surface that we're using, let's say that that surface is uh, on a microscopic level irregular, right? Well, we know almost every surface, nothing's perfect in the real world. There's gonna be some irregularities to it. If you've been through our fundamentals course, you'll know that the datum is a perfectly flat plane. So if we have an irregular surface here, the datum feature is that irregular surface, while the datum is the perfect plane that represents that surface. It's going to use those high points, right, wherever they may be, to create a perfect plane. So that perfect plane is our datum. A cylinder is no different. So if we have a cylinder as a datum feature, let's say that this cylinder, looking at it from the right side view there, is irregular. Well, we're going to use the high points of that cylinder to create a perfect envelope, and that envelope will give us our datum axis. That's how we get a perfectly straight axis from an irregular part. Our datum feature here is going to be the cylinder. The irregular tangible surface is our datum feature. Well, we can create a datum axis that is perfectly straight by using the envelope that uses utilizes the high points or the extremities of that cylinder. So that's the first step in trying to comprehend this question. Um, we know that a datum is a theoretically exact point line or axis or plane. So how can we get a single point as a datum, right? I mentioned datum features are the tangible surfaces. So there's no such thing as a single datum point as a feature, but what we do have is if you picture a sphere, a sphere is the only feature that will be interpreted as only giving us a datum point. We'll use that irregular sphere, find the center point, and that'll give us a point. However, there's a, comp a, a handful of other features such as a cone, where the standard says you a cone will create an axis and a point. So the converging point, you'll have an axis and a converging point here. So the point of that cone is used in tandem with the axis. So a handful of different features will create different, will utilize points, lines, and axes differently. So that's one, <clears throat> one point to this question that we need to answer is how are we identifying the single point? Well, is the single point from a sphere or is it from a cone or how are we creating the single point? Now I should point out that a cylinder, depending on how you want to simulate that datum, if you're going to measure the cylinder and you get a bunch of points of the CMM, well, you might use these two cross sections to get a circle and a center point of each one of those circles and connect those center points to get your axis. You are creating points here using the CMM, and that's fine to get your axis. Um, but that's one, the ASME standard does not outline how we have to get that axis. It just needs to come from the datum feature and from the extremities, the, the extreme points. So however many points or cross sections you take is not outlined by the standard, but you might create a point and another point to create the axis. But at the end of the day, the datum is that axis and not these points. And that's how it's supposed to be interpreted. Get rid of my scribbles here. So can a single point without clocking be used as a secondary datum feature in a feature control frame? Well, we'll see here that we're gonna use this tapered cone as datum C, which is the secondary datum feature in these feature control frames. So let's walk through this drawing example here. We can see this rotating shaft using datum feature A and datum feature B to create datum 
A dash B. Now this might be new to a lot of people seeing this sort of um, setup, and we'll go through this real quick as kind of a step aside to the question. But I want to make sure everybody sees this unique scenario where you can use two datum features to create a single datum axis. A lot of times for um, rotating shafts like these, you have two bearing surfaces, right? Not one bearing surface in the assembly is going to override the other one. They're going to work together equally. They're going to be equally as powerful in that assembly in setting this axis of rotation. Both bearing surfaces create one axis of rotation, not one being more powerful than the other. So the solution to that when you're picking your datums is to do a um, datum setup like this, where you have datum feature B, datum feature A. So this is datum feature A. This is datum feature B, both not more powerful than the other. But what we're doing is creating one axis off both of those and we'll inspect it the same way right we'll set these on some v blocks and we'll rotate this part and we'll create one axis of rotation so the datum is a dash b does everybody see that so we're creating one axis off of two features and that's fine that's what we want to make sure to do because that's how it's assembled right So if we're going to use this irregular part, picture these surfaces being irregular, but these are our datum surfaces, we need to simulate those datum surfaces in a way to create one axis, an axis, and a point. So whether that's manually with V-blocks or on a CMM measuring the surface and utilizing those point clouds to create these envelopes and these axes, that's up to the quality department. It does not, it's not outlined by the ASME standard. So let's kind of go through this. We're going to simulate datum axis a b by taking into account both of these cylinders simultaneously and locking in on the high points of those cylinders so if this if this axis tips up and this axis tips down we're going to create one axis down the center of both of those not one will override either and that's exactly what we'll do here is we'll create this datum axis and we, as we know, a datum axis can control four degrees of freedom. Now we're kind of getting back to the point of this question is can a single point without clocking, it won't do any sort of uh, clocking, be used as a secondary datum feature. Well, this point will be over here, but first we need to analyze what datum axis A, B is doing since it's the primary datum. It can lock in two rotations and two translations. So we see we're locking in V and W. If you look at this part here, we know that we can't rock off of this way or this way, and we can't translate up and down or in and out anymore, right? The two degrees of freedom that are still open is the translation in X and the rotation about that axis, U. So we have not locked down X or U by using our primary datum feature A. So next up, we have datum feature B, which again, or sorry, C, datum feature C, which is going to be our secondary datum feature, which is this, this um, conical tapered cone. And we know that a cone is going to create an axis and a point. And we're going to take the high points of that irregular surface and get an axis and a point. I have a question here pop in. Uh, basic dimension question. I run into a lot of prints where the basic dimensions all relate to zero point on a print, usually for machining setup purposes, even when the other datum features unrelated to the zero point are used to control a feature. Is this okay or do basic dimensions for a controlled feature need to relate them directly to the datum features that control them? That's a really good question. So a lot of times we'll have um, drawings where we'll go in a dimension and keep in mind with basic dimensions, you can't over define a drawing, right? we can dimension if this were datum c back here or another datum as long as you have enough basic dimensions to locate an orient or locate and orientate whatever surface or feature you're most concerned with back to a datum you're fine but you have to have enough basic dimensions to make those calculations and get back there it's not a great practice to have uh, you should always try and get basic dimensions directly back to the datums that are associated to them 
Um, so it's easy to, to figure out where true position or true orientation or that true profile is. Um, but as long as there's enough basic dimensions to do that. And again, you can't over define it. See, we have a basic dimension of 10 here. We also have every dimension locating these surfaces down this length. There's no over defining this. So to answer your question, um, you can do it. Um, it's not it's not ideal practice. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, you bet. Uh, yeah, good good point. Also, as long as that that point is that zero point is related back to the datums of basic dimensions, you're fine. Yeah. So as long as that zero point goes to your datums as well, you're fine. You you should be able to do the math, calculate the true position, true profiles. Good question. So one thing to remember here, we have an axis and a point, right? And we know from a point, a point can stop three, three translations. So we're, this point can stop translations in X, Y, and Z. And this axis of the, co the cone can do the same degrees of freedom control that the axis over here could do. But we know from datum order precedence that datum A dash B is going to take over and override any control that datum C had. So we know that we don't get any control, additional control, from the axis of that cone. And we also know that Y and Z were being controlled. Remember, Y was up and Y and Z were up and down and then in and out of the page. Y and Z, as located here, are being locked by A dash B already. So it loses the power over here. Well, the last translation that this point can control is in X. So what this point is actually doing as a secondary datum feature is locking in translation here. It's not doing any clocking, right? It's not doing any orientation control or rotation control. Sorry, it was not doing any rotation control, but it is doing translational control. And that's perfectly fine. We're saying the datum reference frame set up by A dash B and C as a secondary is leaving this rotational degree of freedom open. And that's fine because there's nothing about this part that needs that clocking done, right? This flat doesn't need to be located to any or rotated or clocked to anything else. It can exist on its own in space. So a lot of times, and even if there was a keyway, let's say if there's a keyway on one of these and we didn't care the orientation, the clocking, sorry, the rotation, the clocking of that keyway, if we didn't care where it landed with respect to any other rotational or radial elements, we wouldn't need to necessarily control that. We're telling manufacturing that we can leave that open, put that wherever you want, just make sure it's orientated to A-B and C. And that final degree of rotation is left free. That's fine. We don't need to control that. So it's up to the design. And this part, it's radially symmetric. So there's no need. There's nothing to control. We it would be it would be redundant and unnecessary to add a rotational degree um, or a clocking feature to control that last degree of rotation. But in this case, we've seen that that point can control and can be used as a secondary datum feature. A lot of times we're told that that secondary datum feature has to control some sort of rotation or some sort of clocking, and that's not the case. It all depends on the setup and the um, function of this part. Our goal is to be your best source for gd &T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd &T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd &T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd &T and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.